as you might remember last time we were talking about ionic compounds, how to name them. Remember we said you write the metals or positively charged ions first, then non-metals or negatively charged ions. This is a structure of barium chloride. You don't write Cl2Ba, but what you write is writing the metal which has positive charge and metals usually have positive charge. First, the charge is plus two and two Cl minus negative two. So first plus, then negative name, barium chloride, the positive partner first. And then you might remember, we said this is uh, potassium oxide and uh, we are writing potassium first and oxide. Hey, uh, listen, I sent you an email, it's fixed. You can take it at night and uh, you will get maximum grade, the highest, not average. Yeah, no, I just have a question about the book for whenever you're done. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine, go ahead. Um, so I have the fourth edition. Yes. And I can't like seem, I can't figure out the chapters in here like at all because there's over like 20 of them. Oh yeah. Uh, go ahead, read chapter one. Uh, read the titles of all 10 chapters for me. Go ahead, go to the inside cover. Um, chapter one's matter and life. Chapter two is measurements in chemistry. Chapter three is atoms in the periodic table. Chapter four is ionic compounds. Chapter five is molecular compounds. Chapter six is chemical reactions. Chapter seven is also chemical reactions. Chapter eight is gases, liquids, and solids. Chapter nine is solutions. And chapter 10 is acids and bases. Okay, go to chapter seven again. Perfect. What is discussed in chapter seven? Uh, energy rates in equilibrium. Go ahead, read, read all of them. What was that? Read everything which is discussed there. Uh, heat changes during chemical reactions, exothermic and endothermic reactions. Why do chemical reactions occur? How do chemical reactions occur? Effects of temperature concentration and catalysts on reaction rates. Okay, that's good enough. Everything is identical to our fifth edition. You don't have anything to worry about. Okay. Yes, you're fine. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so go ahead, do well, and be happy. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye. So potassium oxide, K2O, and this one, magnesium hydroxide, Metal first, non-metal next, and you read the positively charged first and then negatively charged, the charge of magnesium plus two, the charge of hydroxide negative two, because there are two of them, because there are two times negative one. All right, this would be potassium nitrate. And now, well, actually, let me remind you about nomenclature of transition metals. In this case, I'm going to name this. I can't say iron chloride, as you might remember. We discussed this last time. This is iron 2 chloride. Why is it iron 2 chloride? Simply because the charge of iron, which is a transition metal, is plus 2. And the charge of chloride is two times minus one, which is negative two. They add up to be zero. But if I go to FeCl3, you're going to see that there are three chloride, each minus one, total minus three. The charge of iron is going to be plus three. They add up to be zero. So this is not the same iron. Do you see these two iron are different? One of them has plus two charge, 
one of them has plus three charge. And that's nature of most of the transition metal. They can have different charges. So how do we calculate their charge? By looking at their partners here. Partner is suggesting a charge of plus two. Partner is suggesting a charge of plus two. Once we are dealing with transition metal, we calculate their charge based on their partner, and then we show their charge in front of the metal name using Roman numerals. So do you see the difference between these two compounds? Iron three chloride, not iron chloride. Iron two chloride, not just iron chloride. So when we are dealing with transition metal, we can have variable charges, calculate the charge, show the charge in Roman numerals in front of the metal. All right. Of course, we discussed this last time I'm reviewing. So the name, the charge of chromium is three. So we say chromium three sulfide, not chromium sulfide. And now, I want to ask you, what about non-ionic compound, molecular compound? Another word, you guys, you know that there are two products you can make from reaction of carbon and oxygen. This one will kill you, killer gas. This one is not, is bad for the environment. It's not as toxic. It's not toxic, let's say. So in order to identify these two from each other, one of them has one oxygen, I'm going to use mono for one. The other one has got two oxygens, I'll use two for di. So this mono, di, tri, tetra, penta are used to show number of oxygen or number of another non-metal. And these are molecular compounds. That means you don't see metal in them. They are non-metals and non-metals reacting together. They have made covalent bond. So let's see an example. Now, we do not call water dihydrogen monoxide. Why? It's an old compound. We know it for a long time. We know its property. So all their compounds have common name. This is water, not dihydrogen monoxide. And this is not carbon tetrahydride. It's called natural gas, methane. So sometimes you have common names. <clears throat> they are few, they are not many. But if I go, Naming a compound which is made out of two non-metal. Which one do I write first? The element which is coming further on the left of periodic table is coming first. And remember, these are exception. In CH4, there is an exception. We do not write, you don't write C4, I mean H4CY. It's an older compound, you're used to it. But in most cases, we write the element which is further on the periodic table, like H2O. Although it's a common compound, hydrogen is further on the periodic table, you write hydrogen first, then oxygen. You don't write OH2. It doesn't make sense to chemistry. And if you are dealing with compounds which have atoms coming from the same column, the element closest to the bottom, usually first. In other words, sulfur and oxygen, they are both in group 6A. We write SO2, because if you look at periodic table, Sulfur is below oxygen. And what do we call it? How many oxygen? Two oxygen. Sulfur, help me. Sulfur what? Sulfur dioxide. So let's go look at more examples. Let me clean up my board so we can see better. All right.
So we are using mono, di, tri, tetra as a prefix to indicate number of atoms, number of the same atoms being repeated. For example, did you notice when I was naming, let's say, sulfur dioxide. I said sulfur dioxide. I don't say sulfur dioxygen. So the last atom, the name is going to be taking IDE. Sulfur di, not oxygen, but oxide, IDE added to the ending of this element, which is coming next. So let's give you an example, guys. Can I call this hydrogen? Are you died, not hydrogen? Are you dying? Hydrogen, are you died? And this one, Nitrogen, try fluoride, try for three. Fluoride, which is, this is coming after nitrogen. And sulfur dioxide, we already see this. How about this one? Can you guess how many nitrogens? How do you say two? How many chlorine? How do you say four? So what would be the name? Dinitrogen tetrachloride. Tetra di. And how about this one? Can you guess? Can you guess? Go ahead. Nitrogen dioxide. So die because there are two oxygen. IDE because oxygen is coming last. And of course, this is a very toxic gas. It reacts with the moisture in our lungs. It makes nitric acid. It can cause a lot of damage. Die nitrogen oxide. Di nitrogen, why there are two nitrogens? Ox I, I D E, because this is coming after nitrogen. So do you see three atoms together? But lots of difference in property. You can't mix these together. Why? Look at this. Di nitrogen monoxide is laughing gas. It's not going to kill you. It's the gas that your dentist uses on you. So you don't feel the pain. So be careful about nomenclature. We cannot make mistake in writing the formula. We cannot afford to make mistakes in writing the formula and naming compounds. God forbid, imagine a dentist orders the wrong gas. Patient is going to be killed. If you replace N2O with NO2, patient is going to be killed.